Last week you would have seen the guys closed up the barrel of brew peg. In the middle of that we had some bad weather and the guys got on with the job of building the engine bay floorboard. We wanted to show you what happened. Dan Burke and I found this second hand tread plate at the local scrappy. Hopefully after a clean they'll come up nice. We've taken a sunken fishing trawler and converted her to a community funded expedition and research boat crewed by volunteers from around the world. Because life's too short not to fight for your dream. Down here, Jace is templating up this floorboard that goes at the very front. So as you walk through the, the door here, you've got this um, sort of area for a floorboard. We've never made one of these boards up, so um, Jason's just templating something up so that we can fit, um, hopefully, a bit of tread plate in there. And then he's also going to get this one over here done. This will be see-through. It'll be like a mesh type thing. We're going to make that up, so we're going to have like a frame around it, and then we're going to have a essentially a mesh see-through thing. And we want it see-through so we can see what's going on in the bilge. And then that's coat number two on under the engine. So we'll get hopefully another coat on that today and that should be finished under the engine really. Hey, Guys in the kitchen, cleaning up after there. lunch. Out the back. Downstairs, we're doing some repairs on the bonnet of Duncan's car just there. Um, perfect weather for it, rain and what have you. And then over the back, yeah, Jason's over here and he's making our see-through floorboard so we've got some 50 by 50 aluminium angle that's going to be the edge of the floorboard this stuff here so that'll be the edge of the floorboard it'll go all the way around the perimeter and then this will be the actual floorboard itself so it's an awesome piece of aluminium we picked up and it's got um you can sort of see like a grip stuff that this has it's really cool it's only like three mil so these these things here are only like three mil wide but at the top it flares out and it's probably eight mil up the top so it's really cool front stuff the front the back over there oh there we go look at that so that's what we're essentially building is that perimeter and then filling it with that stuff there so yeah so that's cool the guys have made an awesome start on this we've got there's another board over there so you can see that um, template over the back there that's yet to be made that's um, getting made out of six mil tread plate and then with the other boards we're doing this sort of thing we're cutting out the actual timber underneath because we don't need so much timber um, and we're just using it for the supports and then where it's six mil plate so a couple of these are most of them are three a couple of them are six and we're at six we're able to just weld on some supports at the back we don't need to have the timber underneath so yeah pretty cool Jack's just ripping out the center of the plywood so he's cutting basically a hole in each corner and then linking the corners up with a uh, skill saw once that's done jace is getting the 45s sorted so once that's done we can weld them together that was impressive love your work and Burke Burke using a new type of hole saw 100% wood based sustainable alternative to the conventional metal ones so once Burke goes through and cuts them all like that I then go through with a skill saw and just trim out the middle. He started the trimming and then I'm finishing it. We set up a little bit of a production line. Jace over the back is just finishing off the box that our um, front floorboard is going to sit in. But we're getting close, getting very close. That's 225 degrees in radials. Jace is uh, cleaning up the timber. So he's going around the edge, all the various bits that um, Björk and myself have cut out. He's going around with a flapper and just cleaning them up. And then we can get some varnish into that. Seal the wood up and then we can start putting the aluminium onto it. You got a bit of shirt on, your, um, on yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> Donated a shirt to the course. <laughs> nice.
few projects on the go this morning. Uh, it's been raining on and off for the last couple of days. It's actually quite nice to work outside in the rain because uh, you can't tell which is sweat and which is rain then and it looks way better to be wet from rain than it does to look constantly sweaty in my personal opinion. So today I've got some uh, urethane to paint the wood, these raw edges on the wood, um, seal those up and then once that's done um, I've laid out around here aluminium. This is all going on the top of that wood and uh, I'm about to clean this with some uh, cleaning product over the back there and hopefully it'll come up yummy. Uh, I've already water blasted it this morning and taken the uh, uh, main lot of dirt off them so hopefully uh, with a clean and it's the same stuff we used on the dinghy um, should come up looking like that. Well I'm just not going to come up looking like a dinghy that would be quite funny but yeah it should be clean. So Jace is doing the acid wash of the floorboards. These are all of our floorboards stacked up um, on the, the uh, planks. So that's getting cleaned up. While that's happening, um, Duncan over here, he is organizing the NAS, our storage, network storage for all that editing stuff. NAS is having an absolute hissy fit, so he's getting that figured out and then doing some ethernet um, architecture around the boat. Uh, Lots of good jobs. While that's happening, uh, Beck's upstairs organizing some templates for some more storage in the boat. He's gonna try and bury a little space under there where it's a little bit drier and cut that all out. I'm about to head down and grab some eggs because we've run out of food for the crew. Um, so we need to feed everybody and then I'm gonna head into town in the race truck and go and get some more parts. We want to fill Brewpeg with crew and Patreons and head to some amazing places. If you've been following Brewpeg for a while and you feel that we've earned your support, please consider joining us on Patreon. You get to see behind the scenes, but also get the opportunity to come on Brewpeg as we steam around different parts of the world. We want to donate as much sea time as we can to ocean research and projects, and Patreons make that possible. There's a link in the description below. We would love to have you with us. So bolts retrieved, um, we're going to use uh, stainless bolts on this just so that we don't have any rust issues going on in the engine room. Um, give those to Jason. We can't really get uh, any more of the bow welding done. It's pretty wet and miserable at the second so it's on hold for the for the moment and we're doing inside jobs. Jason's got a little tent going on so he can paint in slightly dry weather. Stack and stack of nuts and bolts. Excellent. So we've got all the metal washed off as best we can. Uh, what we're going to do now is put some stainless steel uh, bolts and washers and nuts uh, into these. Uh, we've got to be mindful that the frame that these are sitting on is 15 mil wide, so I need to come in 30 to 50 mil um, for the bolts, so I don't so I don't conf conflict with the mounting brackets that are already there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do this for every single one. So here we go. While these jobs were going on, Björk and I went to the tender centre and we found a little 3.3 outboard that had a diagnosis of seized bearing. Björk scoffed at that, pulled the starter cable and said, that's not seized, I reckon we can fix this. So we managed to get it for a hundred bucks and we brought it home and this is what we have. Yeah, we're running on an alcohol. 
Yeah. That's about a litre of your best there, sir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Moonshine 3.3. <laughs> <laughs> we were drinking last night. Yeah. Right. So how many men does <laughs> it take to diagnose a three horse? Domestic. The yeah, tank okay. is full. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good enough. It's already full? Or what? Yeah. yeah. Just over like maybe a litre and a half. Oh, okay. Right, on a second. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put Bugs shirt on? I, I put it on and then didn't realise that it was. <laughs> this this Looks one's already. Awesome. Hey, this one's been pre. Own. This one's been pre-fired. Uh, <laughs> even your own, you can't just put on a burnt <laughs> shirt and claim that. Oh, oh. I'm such a pretender. Okay. Yeah. Do we have to keep a perimeter based on the horsepower, or? <laughs> Maybe I should oh, pull it down. Someone hold the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm gonna stay clear of the splash zone. Yeah, yeah. Have a um, go. Go for it. Chokes on. I wonder why we just did that. Doesn't seem to ease. Yeah, keep doing the throttle. That doesn't work. <laughs> it's not the throttle. <laughs> no, I was like, hey, this gets good. I guess. <laughs> oh, they put the clip under the choke on, eh? Or is that the kill switch? Yeah, no, that's good. Have we checked the spark on it? Nope. Okay. We'll do Maybe that five minutes later. My we'll arm's do... tired if we check the spark. <laughs> yeah, probably should check, we should the, check spark. the spark. We, might, we may have flooded it. Just We may have flooded it. Just pull it over on full throttle with the choke off. Pull it over a couple of times like that. Yep. And you'll clear the, clear the so cylinder out. Full throttle, ready. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Why is it? So, stop is actually pushing, pulling out the lanyard. Might be, yeah. I mean, it doesn't look too good, to be honest. Looks a bit rusty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pulling the spark plug out. What I actually did was came out of the engine room, saw the cat doing a cute thing, patted her, <laughs> realised I needed to change shirt, and then came down here with a microphone put on. Uh. Yes. Yeah. Not my fault. That's a good reason. Yeah. yeah. It's, it looks fine, but see how wet it is? Mm. It's just flooded. So pull it over heaps now with the throttle on full, and it'll clear the cylinder out. Just um, yeah. Now give it heaps. Just get rid of all the fuel out of it. <laughs> what? Smart works. Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm not even gonna touch. I can it. feel it to about here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Shake for him. Just yeah. <laughs> I felt that in the cockles of my heart. Actually, I was in the way. Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that um, throttle stop. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Throttle stop down again. It's trying. There's definitely fuel coming out yeah, here. Yeah, there is. I was just thinking, I wonder if um, I wonder if the carburetor's got yeah. like, petrol Stopped gum up. in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering if the float is jammed though with like old gum and residue. If we can well, just man. undo that bowl. Yeah. I was expecting know. to see much yeah, worse than that. Exactly. Ooh. Ha. Oh ha. Huh. Okay, choke off. Yes. Here you go. One more. Yeah. Oh, even water. Yep. Even got water. Go again. Go again. Mate. Okay, it works. Right. Fuck, it doesn't like revving. No. That was what it did. That was fuel. That was fuel. Yeah. Hey, I think it's too rich. I think so. So take it in. Take it in one, I reckon. It's weird, it gets to that decided change, wasn't it? It gets to that point and then decides no, we're going, we're off. I wonder if that is a dodgy jet. Maybe, yeah. It's not C's, it's not what they said. No, no dodgy jet, go, yeah. We can't go off their diagnosis yeah, at all. No, their stuff is completely yeah. wrong. Yeah. Not even close. Ooh, close. It's like it's, it's like it, <laughs> it leans out and then dies, almost. Yeah, yeah. sounds like. Um, I'm wondering next time it does if we just... Has anybody else noticed the rain? <laughs> oh, it's coming from up there. Yeah. It's oh. coming from down there. Oh, glad, oh, I thought it was spray from the horsepower. Yeah, we're used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Shall we adjourn well, could do with to the inside? Yeah, let's yeah, wash it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jamie, Jason is building cave. Yeah, it's not raining on this side. No, no, it's lovely on this side. Door into the engine room. Yeah. And that's that little hunky bit. Okay. How'd it go? Yeah, fits. Perfect. So oh, it looks awesome. That rough side, that rough face is the top. Yeah. Come on, Pen. Hang on, I'm just gonna get some um, anti-sparkles. Yep. This is this is the long missing floorboard that goes right inside that door. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, the, oh, no, the one that normally prance over. Yeah. yeah it's beautiful. I wonder if we should go with the the scratchy wheel. I wonder if we should give them a just to make them look like stunning and same. stunning and clean aluminium. Oh, they would would look off amazing. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because we've we've had amazing, we were like stunning, and I think they'd look fucking I awesome. Think, yeah. Up front, Jess once again is cooking up one hell of a cake. <laughs> there's, oh, look at it, it's built. It's built. There's the second layer. There's a sec there. Oh, there's multiple layers. <laughs> and food. Duncan in the front here is working on this beep machine in the corner. Beep machine right there. That's the NAS. Yeah, so um, NAS, network attached storage. Basically, we're having a whole bunch of issues trying to get this thing connected and talking to the rest of the boat. Yes, a few frustrations. You can see a couple of amber lights on the corner of the box there. So we know we've got one faulty drive and the other three drives, it insists that they need uh, formatting. So I think we've unfortunately uh, lost a lot of data. Uh, so basically we're wiping a slate clean and we're uh, setting up the pool of storage all over again. Uh, we know we've got some good new drives in there. Damien put them in not so long ago. Uh, so uh, I'm just about to start formatting all of those things and then connecting together as a pool. Um, I mean, they take about 500 minutes to Wicked. format I've been quoted. Wicked. So it sounds like a night time job. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's been that's been Duncan's afternoon is digging into that. Snoop is dealing with people running around his boat. He seems to be happening quite happy with that. How are you finding it with lots of people on the boat? Oh, lovely. Very enjoyable. It's nice, eh? Yeah. Feels full. Yeah. I'm really surprised the cat's so so relaxed and groovy. She's Kind of can't get enough cuddles and she gets them whenever she needs them. <laughs> yeah. Really good. Yeah. I think she's she lucked on the plan there. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Good. There we go. Yes. We can hear your chit chat now. Me talking to myself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so right. Do you need a spanner? You do, don't you? I, I need to. I need to replace that with one that'll fit. So, like a metric adjustable spanner. Uh, yeah, you could do one of those. Yep. Not one that's boat size though. Okay. Right, that might be easier to screwdriver with. Too easy then. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Righty tidy, strippy Lucy. Strippy. 
Uh, it was all going so well until we used this British standard nut fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This one's still got to be trimmed a little bit. Jace has cleaned up the floor. In the engine room, ready to go. Time to get some floorboards in here. This is what it looks like pre-floorboards. Do you, do you want to come out of the shadow like an Australian spider? <laughs> and this is the view when all the floorboards are down. Oh! Anything we've got to do left, fit the floorboard to the very front and build a floorboard that goes across the prop shaft. But we're going to leave that one until the get home motor's in because don't quite know what shape we have to build yet. So Jace is working on the last floorboard. This is the grate we've got at the front. This here is like, I don't know, 25 mil, something like that thick. Um, and this is, or this here is 50 mil thick. So the plan is to basically knock off whatever the distance is, get rid of that, um, and make this a flat floorboard rather than having these big manking edges. Let's have another little look-see. So Beck's gone ahead and ripped the three horse apart trying to find out what's going on internally because we heard a bit of a clunk and then nothing and then it was just you pull the string nothing happened. There's nothing internally wrong with the motor we thought maybe it was bearings con rod crank something like that there's nothing wrong with that side of it. What is going on is over here let me show you. These motors use a CDI flywheel so you've got big magnets basically around the ring of that flywheel and they create a voltage in this unit here which then sends it down to the spark plug so it's pretty simple if the motor's spinning it'll create spark provided all of this gear here is working because magnets don't fail and that there's about the only thing that can fail what can go wrong have you look at this here get the light in there you may be able to see that pin is completely flogged out so what was going on over here might be able to make out can you see all those scratches and rubbish going on down the bore so essentially what happens is that pin there should be sitting in there nice and snug and it should never really change like the timing is set that doesn't ever alter um, because this here was flogged out it was moving back and forth and therefore we'd get backfires and then we'd get times where it wouldn't start and then it would run and then it would change and something else would happen so it was just a constant varying thing we could never really diagnose it because the symptoms always changed makes sense when you think the timing was always altering so what I need to do, normally you would replace this crank um, or machine out a different slot in there, like basically create a new slot so you can potentially weld these up and then remachine them, but that's pretty risky because you change the hardening, you also change the potentially warp the shaft itself. Same deal with this, you can machine this, you can sleeve it, you can do all sorts of stuff to fix this. But there's actually a really simple trick that I saw on TikTok, so obviously it has to be pretty accurate, so I'm going to give it a go. With the right technique, it's possible to actually get this thing to hold I believe, using simple household hot glue. But because this is a 3.3 and not the original 2 horsepower that these things came out with, I've got a trick to deal with the extra torque. There we go. One and two. Fix the little boo-boo in there. That's the top of your piston. You see it's burning quite clean because there's no carbon and rubbish on it. This is the exhaust port. So as you bring the piston down, you can see the basically the top of the piston you can clearly see into the bore but then if you look down here you've got a, a hole there and a hole on that side 
and that's the intake ports. So they're different heights in the cylinder. So they that's basically the equivalent of valve timing on a two-stroke. So if I come up like that and seal off the intake port, you can see the exhaust port still open. So it's clearing out rubbish gas, old gas, and then it comes up and seals it off. And then now it's going to compress whatever's left in that cylinder and fire. So it'll get there, the spark will happen, and it'll get pushed down. But as it's getting pushed down, it's, it's pressurizing the fuel that's in the crankcase. So it doesn't actually put fuel into the ports directly. It puts it into the, into the crankcase and fills the hole. That's why you have to run oil with your two-strokes. That's how they get their lubrication. So it's pressurizing everything in the um, crankcase right now using the firing stroke to pressurize it and then it exhausts the gas out the exhaust port and then it opens up the transfer ports, which the intake ports and then the pressurized gas in the crankshaft come racing up and fill that cylinder again and then the whole process starts again. So that's why two strokes, they're really bad on gas like because they put a lot of raw fuel down the exhaust and they burn oil and things like that but they're really powerful for the size they are. So a 50cc two stroke will have more power than a 50cc four stroke because a four stroke um, does four cycles before it you get power out of it. So it does um, uh, intake, compression, um, power stroke, and then um, exhaust stroke. So you get so for every four movements of the piston, you get one power stroke. Whereas for every single movement of the piston in a two stroke, you're getting power. So it's like 50% more power out of them roughly. But they're terrible on gas. That's why no one makes them anymore. Everyone's going four stroke. So this is the top of the leg. This is the outboard um, power head. So we need to get this surface onto here. We're going to go around and just use some grey RTV, some high temp RTV, and just silicon this down. We're not going to replace the gasket. Okay, it's not solely hot glue holding this together. We TIG welded the crank to the flywheel, so we'll see if this thing lasts. Back together, we've got um, an analog for the ocean and we're going to give this thing a bit of a go. Fuel on, we've got a bit of choke, we've got the key in, give it the herbs. Fucking perfect. So it turns out welding the flywheel to the crankshaft is a legitimate repair. That's the cheapest outboard in the history of the world. <laughs> I can't believe it worked so bloody easily. Yeah. Brilliant. We have an outboard. Yeah. Put it in board. Whoop, whoop. We have horsepower. And neutral. <laughs> 